If you want an idea of what civil chaos looks like, think Flint, Michigan. All you need to create panic in the streets is for people to learn that the water coming out of their tap is poisoning them. Stampedes of people gutting store shelves of bottled water, people marching, not for civil rights, but for the simple and sacred right to clean water. Flint isn't the only water crisis Americans face. Industrial and mining runoff, ageing pipes a hundred years plus old, lack of funding to update water purification plants, arsenic, fluoride, hormone altering drug residues, brain eating amoebas. The 600 new contaminants listed the FDA. They can't even afford to remediate or even work out how to remediate. They're in everyone's hometown water supply now and hey. I'm not trying to be the prophet of doom. I'm just someone in the industry from a long way away, Australia, that knows what's really going on. And here's the bottom line. With those 600 new contaminants affecting our well-being right now, there's an invisible line cutting through every town in America. Above the line, people who have the money to filter their water. Below the line, people who don't have the money to filter their water. It's the mission of this project to move that line down so more people below the line who can't even afford the most basic clean water can join us, the lucky ones drinking pure water and confident in the future of our families. So here's my inside information on what you really have to know about the 70% of your body that you replenish every day by drinking water. That's 70% of you. Now I'm not going to tell you it's a cover up, a conspiracy, big business or some sort of bureaucratic breakdown. It could be any or all of these, but so what? You can't look forward when you're looking backwards, right? So I'm going to give you just a few facts. Fact one, the system's broken. While Washington argues about how to fix this after we get sick, people are getting sicker because the system's broken. Remember the Romans? They died like flies because they drank from lead cups, ate off lead plates, and piped their drinking water through lead pipe. 2,000 years have passed. What's changed? Well, we don't eat and drink from lead vessels anymore, but millions of us still drink water from corroded, contaminated, leaking lead pipes. There are around half a million breaks in these pipes every year. And I'll give you one small example of a break that you might have a giggle about if it wasn't so crazy. One break in an old pipe was under a cemetery. Now when a pipe breaks, it doesn't just break, it continues to be used so the water that goes out into the soil comes back into the system. You can use your imagination. And don't think it's going to change. The estimate is a cool trillion dollars. And just imagine the disruption to our lives in digging up and replacing a complete water reticulation system in hundreds or thousands of towns and the millions of miles of pipes. In my opinion, it's the biggest national crisis on the map. But here's your problem. Old pipes are under old neighbourhoods and old neighbourhoods, generally speaking, house left less affluent people. And like it or not, less affluent people have no political clout to change the system. Of course, that's only one problem of the water system. I'll share some insights if you stick around. But in summary, everyone in the US may be at risk if they don't know what's in their water. So I want to help you and help you to help others. This project isn't about blaming anybody. It's about moving forward and paying it forward. I want to thank Indiegogo for this opportunity. It's really crucial information I'm sharing. And through Indiegogo, I can help huge numbers of families with your help. Okay, fact one, the system is broken. Fact two, the history. 25 years ago, the people of Milwaukee were hit by a very, very nasty biological poison. It was in their water. In April 1993, a microscopic organism, a cyst, known as Cryptosporidium, began to flourish in Milwaukee's water supply. Now, crypto, as we call it, has a really clever trick to get past the water filters of the time. It curls up into a tiny ball small enough to pass through most filters, and once in the body, it uncurls itself and goes to work, wreaking havoc. Thousands of people got sick, 69 people died. It was so bad that people with shocking diarrhoea who presented to ER were told to go home and hydrate. The hospitals were full to overflowing. They went home and they did what the doctor said. They drank more water. Now, I'll leave the rest of the story to your imagination. They couldn't see it. They couldn't taste it. But small as it was, it was lethal for almost 70 people. To them, it looked like a glass of clear water. Looking back, 
It was the worst waterborne outbreak since cholera. And what caused it? Simple incompetence by plant operators. They didn't even check the indicators the system showed them. The thought. My family's health depended on a humble, low-paid, probably inadequately paid, plant operator. He comes to work with a hangover, a grudge and an attitude. And he's the guy you totally depend on. Wow, over 400,000 people were affected. Fact number three, nothing has changed. 25 years ago, it was what someone called the one-cell assassin, cryptosporidium. Just today, it's lead, chromium, pharmaceuticals, cocaine, hundreds more. The system hasn't improved because the system is broken. Fast forward to Toledo in, o- in Ohio in 2014. Suddenly, City Hall issues a statement. Don't drink the water. Don't even touch it. It was coming out puke green. What was it this time? Algal bloom from chemical farm runoff. It was overwhelming Lake Erie. The water looked like green paint. So who or what took the blame this time? Well, we could blame the farmers. But you know, they were doing their best. Or we could blame the shallowness of Lake Erie, which caused the phosphorus in the runoff to turn the shallow lake water to goop. Today, Lake Erie is officially called dead. Nothing can, can live except this algae. And what was a good water system 100 years ago is suddenly broken. In this case, the algal bloom contained microcystins, poisonous enough to kill a dog or cat, or to create serious health problems, stomach upset, eye problems, liver or kidney failure. You're going to love this. Microcystins have even been used by the military as a bio-warfare weapon. And guess what happened? Local stampedes again. People fighting each other over the last bottle of water on the supermarket shelf. Today, Lake Erie is still struggling to clean up. So is there anything different here? No. Much of the same. No money, no political will to tackle the problem. Fact number four. Flint. Months of headlines. Always the same. Poor Americans deprived of their clean water. Bigger than Milwaukee, bigger than Toledo. But at the bottom of it all, the same problem. The system is broken. Unlike Toledo, Flint residents couldn't see the lead in the water. And it wasn't just lead. Hot on the heels of the lead scare, record numbers of Legionnaires' diseases were also reported. So, where to from here? Well, we now know that at least 43 US states are drinking polluted water. That's 250 million Americans. Yep. 250 million Americans. Okay, fact five. Even if you have no lead, no crypto or no algal bloom in your water, you're still faced with toxins in what is accepted as good town water. It's something I'm sure that water plant designers never envisaged. When your town supply adds chlorine to kill bacteria and viruses, rotting organic materials in our water, or water has it, dead animals, decaying plant matter, combine with the chlorine to create a new nasty, trihalomethanes. So does it really matter how your water got polluted? No, it's polluted and that's what matters. The simple truth is that you are the only person who can change things. Now you could go to a big box store and buy a simple pitcher filter. You could do what the folks of Flint resorted to and drink bought water out of plastic bottles. They're still getting water from plastic bottles years later. Okay, so let's get serious here. Let's quickly list what you need to protect you, your family and your family's future health. Firstly, major contaminant reductions, carcinogenic chlorine, carcinogenic chloramines, brain-altering fluoride, DNA-modifying heavy metals, residual pharmaceuticals, illegal drug residues. So far, we've got a list that disqualifies most, if not all, old technology water filters. So let's add a few more. Lead, ferrous iron, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, selenium, mercury, bromine, Volatile organics, PCBs, bisphenol A, organic acids, proteins, polysaccharides. So now add to that bacteria, E. coli, Legionella, Pseudomonas. That's a short list. Viruses, polio, rotavirus, norovirus, virus, and many, many others. Cysts, cryptosporidium, giardia. Now, a year ago, some filters could remove some of this list of, na- of deadly nasties. But because of their old technology, they usually slowed the water to a drip. Holes in the filter were so small, they could only process water very, very slowly. You had to buy a pump and a tank to fill to get a small amount of purified water at any acceptable sort of flow rate. But now, that's all changed. Not only is the picture perfect a filtering powerhouse, it's also overcome the, prom- the problem I just spoke of, the agonizingly slow flow rate. You could watch a Game of Thrones episode 
waiting for a glass of water from some of the old style filters. Here's why. Our picture perfect filter has a very neat trick up its sleeve. It doesn't have small holes so it doesn't have slow flow. It flows many times faster than other filters. So how can this work and still give good filtration? Well, it uses nanofibers and each nanofiber is electrostatically charged. It attracts contaminants, plucking them from the water as they go past. And get this, it's 25 times more efficient than old technology. It operates well in a much greater range of water. It's still good in brackish water or even in salty water. So not only does it filter far more efficiently, it works far more efficiently. I've seen firsthand when families buy one of the old slow flow systems, they end up not drinking enough water and that's a health risk of itself. This invention will pay for itself time and again, saving you from the big risk of the cost and the pain of poor health from poor quality water. Let's face it, the simple pitcher filter has always been the easiest way for you to have a supply of clean chilled water on hand. Fill it up, dump it in the fridge, and it does the work. But the old pitcher filter never really cleaned up the water to today's standards, so it's all over Red Rover for these old filters. We've adapted this medical grade filter technology to a simple pitcher filter. No special apps, no touch panels, no smart jug has ever made it to market. We want our jug simple. Fill it up, bung it in the fridge. End of story. We've done the work, we've researched every filter pitcher on the market, we've tested them, we've identified the contaminants everyone now needs to get out of their water. We've been incredibly lucky. After almost 18 years of water research, we know that new filtration technology that really makes a difference to people's lives comes around about once a decade. And we know that this technology is the one that we've been waiting for. We've simply made it available to people like you. I showed you many of the contaminants that we all need to protect ourselves from. I said that the old technology water filter pitchers removed a few at best. What I didn't say was that the Pitcher Perfect filters every single contaminant I talked about and a huge extra range, far, far beyond any other filter pitcher. So last word, we could have made this available to the marketplace in general, but how would that have helped all of those people drinking toxic water every day of their lives? We couldn't afford to just give away thousands of filters, but this was an opportunity that comes, and well, we're putting our trust in you to help us make it happen. To pay it forward and get the double reward, a brilliant, picture perfect filter made in the USA, and a warm, fuzzy feeling that you know you did something to help a stranger today. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you, seeing you on our pledge list, and to hearing from your friends that you pass forward to this page. Thank you.